Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to do some bracketology. It is Tuesday morning. We got conference tournament starting or underway or in some cases finished. We got the ACC going today. We got the SEC starting tomorrow. Blake and I will be there and we got bracketology. Man, do we have bracketology, Blake. I got a sheet in front of me that has been tinkered with so many times. It, it's unbelievable. And um, we're going to hopefully give people some answers they want in bracketology. Let's start at the top where you surmised yesterday you thought Alabama was a lock for the one seed. And I, I think with about 99% certainty, you're right on that. The, the only thing that could happen maybe is if Purdue and UCLA and, and Houston ran the table and, and maybe Alabama lost in the first – game but I mean th those are a lot of big ifs and um yeah a Alabama I, I think can sleep pretty well knowing it's going to be a, a one seed agreed all right with that let's move on to Tennessee which is our next SEC team and the Vols are in a a little bit of a, a weird spot. It, I mean, you could make a case for Tennessee as a three seed. You could make a case for Tennessee as a four seed. I don't think you could make a case for Tennessee as anything but that right now. I've got Tennessee as the last three. I've got it. Well, I'll, I'll just read you my seed line to this point. I went Kansas, Alabama, Houston, Purdue, UCLA, Texas, Baylor, Arizona, Kansas State, Gonzaga, Marquette, and then the Vols at 12, followed by Connecticut, Indiana, Xavier, and San Diego State. Frankly, right about where Tennessee is is when you start to get in the range of where it's hard to know what to do with some of these teams. Uh, you might could include Marquette in that. You got a Connecticut right behind Tennessee. I, I could make the case to put Connecticut in front of Tennessee. I don't know that I would, but it's really close. The problem with Tennessee is nine losses is kind of a lot to be in that range, although Baylor's got nine and is on the two line. Um, although the Big 12 is clearly the best conference in basketball, and that has something to do with it. And you've also got Indiana a couple spots behind Tennessee with 10 losses. So Tennessee's not the only team here that's got a lot of losses. That's what happens when you play in a tough league and play a tough out-of-conference schedule, which is what Tennessee did. Yeah, I mean, I, I said I, I don't think they're dropping anywhere below four. Um, no, you know, they might might wind up on the four line, but I yeah, I think that they'll certainly have their opportunity to stay on the three. And again, it as we always say, it just depends on what the committee is going to look at. And I'll I'll make that statement for another team here in just a minute in terms of um, you know it feels like year by year sometimes that changes what they're emphasizing on resumes. And um, I think with Tennessee, as we talked about before, we've said many times, they, you know, have banked some good wins. Um, obviously, you know, have not played well down the stretch in terms of, you know, winning the number of games they were winning before that, but they still have a, a good resume. Obviously the computers love them. Uh, and yeah, I just, I think Tennessee winds up as a three or a four. Next SEC team on our list, Texas A&M. Last time I did this, and to be honest, I tinkered near the top and the bubble of the bracket when I rebalanced a little bit this morning, looked to see how the computer numbers have changed. And so <laughs> right in that area where Texas A&M is, and this also goes for Kentucky, Missouri, I did not do a lot of adjusting. I had A&M. As the last number five seed, I don't know what Joe Lenardi had the Aggies at this morning. I know he released one. Perhaps you can tell me. But A&M has is, is got a, a really solid case. Of course, the issue is those two quad four losses back in December. But other than that, the Aggies have piled up some pretty nice wins, are playing great basketball. The resume computers like them. The predictive computers like them. And I feel like A&M is going to end up in that, that six range, give or take a seed depending on what happens in Nashville. And frankly, I mean, I, I, I don't know that a and I don't know, might be hard to wait to play its way into a four with a couple of quad four losses. Uh, but I feel like we're in the right territory right now at, at the end of, of the five seeds. I, I could be higher on, on A&M than the others, but that's how I see it. Well, I don't know why we would bank on A&M moving up and if, if, even if they win the SEC <laughs> tournament. True. So there's, there's no chance I'm going to do that, but um Bracket Matrix has them as the last six at this moment. 
Yeah. Uh, again, how many brackets were updated as of last night's games? I don't know, but um, last six and Lenardi had him as a seven. So um, once seven? again, since I know, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, they could have been the, I'm the sorry. First. I just, okay. But, but here's, my, here's my yeah. point. Okay. <laughs> Poor Joe Lenardi here, guys, uh, Chris, now you're joining the, the train here, but they're the last six in bracket matrix. He has them as so it's a five spot like first seven. No, yeah. it's a one spot difference. <laughs> If they're the last six and he looks like he has them as the top seven based on the bracket, I mean, it's a one spot difference. So, well, it's a one seed it's... difference. It's a five spot difference in where we have that. Cause I ranked him one to whatever just to. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that that's, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about if, if we're looking at the whole beyond ours, if we're looking at bracket matrix yeah. and just combining everything there, it's basically a one spot difference. Um, so yeah. So if yeah. he, if he's off two on his end and I'm off two on my end, then neither of us are that far off. I think it's fair to say they're a six or a seven. Um, I don't think anything they do in the SEC tournament is going to matter because that's what we were told last year. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm half joking Which on that, but I'm so stupid. I'm just saying I, I don't I don't know how much it's going to matter, but it will depending on what happens with the teams around them because there happens to be another SEC team that's right near them. I think, and most people have that SEC team ahead of them right now. So may I rant for a minute? No oh boy. We were going to try to keep this short, but it, if this goes 45 minutes well, again, okay. we're, I, going to, I, we're going to have to start. When I, when I say down. a minute, I mean a minute or less. You you don't play – I mean, you play all the teams on your schedule. The games in November matter. The games in the conference tournament in mid-March matter. You get a disproportionate sample size of good teams playing good teams and great teams playing great teams in the middle of March, which is proximate to the tournament. I don't know why these games didn't get more weight than they did a year ago. I mean, you see teams that, like USC, for example, has not gotten a lot of really great wins against tournament-level teams. UCLA, Auburn, Arizona State is all I've got USC down for. And, and Arizona State's not even in the tournament, and Auburn's barely in. I mean, don't, don't you want to see how USC does if it plays a UCLA or an Arizona? I mean, you don't get a lot of chances for some of these teams to play games against other tournament worthy teams. Now there's some exceptions like the big 10, it seems like all the good teams played each other multiple times. And you saw that some in the sec, but I, I don't get it. I, I really want to, I'm a whole lot more concerned about how you play against tournament caliber teams than I am how you play against Southeast Missouri state. And you get these opportunities. I don't know. I, I think it's laziness. I, I think it's not continuing to do your diligence, but Maybe that's just me. Well, I think people can use whichever side of the argument they want to use that most benefits them. Like, I think that's like, if you're looking at it from, a, <clears throat> again, and, and I, we, we say this cause like, you know, SEC fan bases like to have fun with other SEC fan bases and it's, you know, well, if you're not an A&M fan, well, look at, look at the bad losses, but <laughs> you also can't ignore the good wins. And, um, you know, you, again, you can say that about a lot of teams you, you can, I, I'm I'm kind of with you on that. I mean, it's and we also say that every game matters, right? Until you get to the conference tournament, <laughs> then those games don't matter. Particularly to Saturday, it's you know, you know, well, right? I mean, it's like we we can say all that, but it's again, that's the that's the always thing I I find funny is every game's supposed to matter, but then we sort of maybe but don't. Then really some value, of them don't. Yeah, we, we don't really value the ones that are played right before the. <laughs> the NCAA tournament. We don't, we don't value the tournament games that are played before the big tournament. Um, and again, I'm not saying that's the case in every one of them, but it is kind of, I think, funny sometimes when you hear that because then then why are we playing conference tournaments? What's the point? Right. So the, the um, TV money, that's the point. Yeah, that's all it is. But we, we're not going to say that out loud. Um, but yeah. It's, Except we just did. <laughs> well, no, we, we will say it out loud. Right. They're not going to say it out loud. So, right. you know. Okay, ran over. Kentucky. I, I don't know how you would put Kentucky over A and M. Um, I, I'm looking at the predictive computers. They both got. Although I need to update Kentucky, they both have them averaged at a 19. Pretty even when you look at the resumes. So yeah, the, could... the resume computers have A and M at a 22. The resume computer or the predictive computers have Kentucky at a 20. <clears throat> Kentucky's lost 10, A&M's lost 8. Of course, Kentucky played a tougher out of conference schedule. 
Um, like they are pretty even. Like so, I don't they, know. They're that close. I they're yeah, I mean, it, it's not off. it's not egregious. I, I've got Kentucky sandwiched right between Michigan State, Northwestern, Iowa State, Missouri. Uh, I think Kentucky's a better team than Northwestern. I think Northwestern's got a better resume than Kentucky, which is probably what matters most. Same with Michigan State, which, for what it's worth, happened to beat Kentucky head to head. I mean, yeah, you you can. You can pick your horse and ride it depending on what team you want to elevate or lower. But I've got Kentucky is the last six seed. But again, this is the part of the bracket that, that I've mostly got updated, but I haven't gone back and looked at the computer numbers and how they changed the last day or two because that, that can separate teams a little bit. I don't have a lot to add. These are the teams in this area that we're going to be doing multiple bracketologies this week. Like, I don't think there's a lot to, they're not moving a whole lot one way or the other. So, um, yeah, Kentucky probably settles in around a six, I guess. I got Missouri's a seven. I think that's probably a seed line higher than most right now. Is that correct? Yes, or but here's what I'm going to say. It goes back to A&M. To me, Missouri is the ultimate. What will the committee value most this year? They're that kind of team. And I said this to someone on Twitter. They are going to be the team that I think when we look back, it's like you will know exactly what the committee valued when you look at where Missouri's seated. And I think you can say the same thing about Arkansas because I keep saying they're the two most fascinating cases to me. But it feels like the committee will lean on one thing or another every year. It may not be the same thing every year, but I think Missouri is going to be the what will the committee value this year team. Like I think that's what they're going to be. And I'm with you. I think that I've seen some people have them as a nine. Some people have them as maybe the lowest eight. I just don't see either of those. I think they're higher than that. Um, but Mm -mm. we will see, Uh, we will see again. I'm not, I'm not the selection committee. We're not, you know, breaking news. We're not the selection committee. I don't, I don't know what they're going to value most, but I think Missouri will be a great example of what they value. And you'll know that as soon as they are revealed on the bracket. Oh, Missouri again, no losses in quad two, three or four. And let's see, is there any team above Missouri? Okay, here's the teams that can say they don't have any losses outside of quad one. Kansas, Alabama, UCLA. There's only like a couple. There's not many. Texas, Baylor, uh, and, and those are all ones and twos. Outside that, nobody else can say that, that I'm yeah. immediately so. seeing. Um, now, now look for Missouri, fourteen and zero against quads three and four, and so it did. A, it got a lot of those wins against bottom feeding teams, but the top end wins at Tennessee, Kentucky, Iowa <clears> State, <throat> Arkansas, Mississippi State at home, Illinois neutral floor. That, that's a nice collection of of wins. I, I think Missouri's got a little bit of everything. If you want to knock them, played a lot of games against crappy competition, which is why it's got a two oh six out of conference schedule, uh, but it, five and five on the road. That's okay. There's a lot of teams in front of Missouri that went under 500 on the road two and no neutral sites. So seven and five away from them. I, I just don't think, look, the NC, I think sometimes this gets done out of laziness. You can't explain to where to pick a team. Well, you know, we, we got their non-conference at two Oh six, even though the overall was 40 and all games are supposed to matter. I mean, the NCA can, can pick at little things here and there, that are, that are sort of, in my opinion, in, in a lot of ways, not that loud. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's justification for we didn't do our homework. I don't know. I'm on another rant here, but that's Missouri. Yep, Missouri cannot control their unbalanced SEC schedule. Like I don't know why this is not talked about. Like, okay, so so they they have 14 of their wins in quad three and four. Now the non conference schedule you can pick on a little bit. Because as we said, the non-conference schedule wasn't great. Um, but like they can't control the fact that they played LSU twice and LSU happened to be the worst team in the SEC. They can't control that, you know, all they did was beat Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Georgia, LSU twice. They beat the bad teams. <laughs> what else do you want them to do? <laughs> if they lose to the bad teams, then what's the conversation going to be? So then you're going to penalize them. It's again, it's it's totally <laughs> hypocritical. Like, I mean, what else are they supposed to do? They beat all those teams, but because you played them, we're going to knock you for it. Because it's an unbalanced SEC schedule that you don't control. But again, hey, that's why the non conference. not RPI anymore. Well, that's why the non conference is so 
important. And we keep saying that about every SEC team, especially the ones that are, you know, near the bubble and stuff. Like the non-conference schedule matters. And hey, wasn't the greatest non-conference schedule, but in, in the grand scheme of things, can you blame for Missouri for not playing the most brutal non-conference schedule out there? No, they got a new coach and this almost a brand new team. What he had yet, so right? Like it's, I mean, uh, yeah. So it's a, uh, I. I just feel like Missouri is going to be higher than than people think, but I also think it's going to matter what the committee values the most this year, and I do think that changes from year to year. So, okay, now we get into the teams that that really do have some some flaws. When we get into the eight nine range, you got some. Actually, you don't have as many teams here with awful losses as I would have thought, but I, I don't know. I heard someone say like Providence this morning was was maybe starting to slide towards the bubble. I had Providence as an eight the last time I did this. And again, this is the territory where I haven't done as much of my homework the last couple of days. I've probably updated some of the wins, but not looked at the latest numbers. Um, I, I've got Arkansas as the last or next to last nine seed right between Florida Atlantic and Pitt on my list of one to whatever. A um, couple spots ahead of Boise State. This is where you start to get really – starts to get a little murky, and it really starts to get murky in about eight or ten more spots. But d- does anybody not have Arkansas in at this point, no, no matter what we think of the Razorbacks or what others think of the Razorbacks? Well, I mean, everybody has them in because they're going to get in. Um <laughs> Uh, but but there are some people that don't. I don't know. Right. They're just doing it based off of I don't. I think their resume is you know flawed and they shouldn't be this high in the net. Like that's that's just that's emotion. That's not. They're going to get in. I mean it's it is what it is. And and we've said like I think Arkansas is the ultimate. They're the computers love them way more than they should. That's the best way to put it. Like they the computers should not love Arkansas as much as they do. And I know that may not that may not make some Arkansas fans happy, but if you've watched them play, I don't know how you could look at a 19 and 12 team that has really struggled to beat good teams down the stretch and, you know, feel that great about sort of what you're seeing right now. And so, you know, I mean, it's because, look, we can say the same thing about Arkansas. You're talking about Missouri, right? Well, 12 of Arkansas's 19 wins came from three and four quads. So. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> and they got a loss in there. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I I understand it. Like, people look at Arkansas, and I I just look at it when you're looking at, you know, the predictive computers love them. And, hey, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to say about Arkansas. They're, they're the other team with Missouri, I think. It's what will the v- committee value most. I would not be surprised if Arkansas is ranked lower than people think. Wouldn't be surprised they're ranked higher than people think. Because I, I don't know what they're going to look at with Arkansas resume for a team that went eight and ten in the SEC. We're missing, you know, their top ten draft pick for a good chunk of the season. And but even though they've got him back, they, they've struggled. I mean, they still haven't been able to win a lot of games. So I, I'm fascinated by Arkansas. Two and eight on the road, yeah. although three and, and, no two and eight on the road. So. I don't know. Okay, next team I've got, I've got Auburn as the last 10 seed. Um, wins over Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri at home. Mississippi State, was that in Auburn? I think it was. And then Northwestern on a neutral site. And, you know, Auburn, no quad four losses, one quad three loss, one quad two loss. N- nothing really exciting, but Auburn didn't take on a lot of bad losses, and that matters too. Yeah, I mean, I, like we said, I, Auburn's firmly in the field. Um, and like you mentioned, too, it's it was probably good for Arkansas and Auburn that they got paired in the SEC tournament because there's bad loss avoidance there if you happen to think it's even somewhat close, which I I still feel like both teams would have got in, but you wouldn't want to you know pair up with a South Carolina or LSU or somebody and all of a sudden you know lose that game and give the committee any reason to question anything else. So yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, Auburn just sort of avoided just bad losses. And outside of that game at Georgia, I mean, it's, they don't have a lot of great, great top end wins, but 
you know, they, they got enough that has pushed them in that. And like we said, they, just getting the Tennessee win was, it was a must win game for Auburn and they won it. And that, you know, put them in the field, how high they can go. I just, I don't really know. Um, because, you know, beyond some of that computers, love them. Predictive stuff loves them. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a matter of seeding for Auburn at this point. And I mean, I guess it's right. Here's what I gotta say. When you're in this range, do you really want to move up or, do you really want to move into the eight, nine, or are you good with playing the seven, 10? Um, you know, so I think it's, it's pick your poison there. So. Okay. Next we have Mississippi state, which is one of Joe Lenardi's last four in. I'm not, I'm not super sure about that. This is where it gets really, really confusing. I mean, Really from Nevada right on down, and even NC State maybe, even Boise State if you want to go. there. I mean, it's just – it's a land of muck here <laughs> where – I'm not saying they're bad teams, but I'm just saying they're really hard to distinguish from each other. Uh, the, the computers really love them some Mountain West this year for whatever reason. Mm. Um. Here is how I've got them ranked this morning. Nevada 42, Wisconsin 43, Penn State 44, Rutgers 45. 45 would be the last team in if there's no bid steals. Mississippi State 46, Michigan 47, Arizona State 48, Oklahoma State 49, Utah State 50, Vandy 51, North Carolina 52, Oregon 53, Clemson 54. Now, look, God help you if, if you can sort 42 to probably about 51 and, and tell me where these teams should be. Because it is what you want away. A lot of these teams have quad four losses. Utah State's got two of them. Utah State is, is really hard to get a handle on because they are – Utah State is 27 in the resume computers and 39 in the predictives. Both those say at large worthy, but you look at who they beat. It's been Boise State, Nevada at home, and if you want to go to Oral Roberts, New Mexico home. Not, not a lot there. Seven overall losses, which isn't bad, but again, I don't, I don't know who they beat. Um, 14 of their wins were in quad three and four, two losses in quad four, one and four in quad one. Uh, Lunardi's got – Got him in the field today. I, I I can't I can't get there. Um. Yeah, I th I think you could argue Vandy. Probably head of Utah State, Oklahoma State, and Arizona State. It's just what do you what do you value? And again, that's where the the, the three quad losses and three and four hurt Vanderbilt. Uh, Arizona State's only got one loss between quads three and four. Same with Oklahoma State. I think Vanderbilt's top end wins are better. The computers have the resumes in the same range. Vandy's might even be better. Uh, they are a little bit. Man, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I can tell you maybe how I'd sort through it, but I, I I've looked at these a lot of years. I don't know that I've ever been as confused between what the committee might do you know, between 41 and, and 54 as I've got them ranked. Hmm. Well, I think for Mississippi State, uh, my my thought stays the same. I think they've, they've got to beat Florida. I don't think there's any question at this point that that has to happen. Um Beyond that, I don't know. And and I'm going to go back to what I said on a live stream last night. And I'm going to do this quickly because we're going to try to wrap this up since we're going to be doing as many of these this week as we are. Um, <laughs> what we say right now will change <laughs> because there are other games that are going to be played. So at this very moment, we can say that we think Mississippi State needs to do this or that. That's going to probably change by the time Mississippi State plays on Thursday. 
because we don't know. I mean, we don't know who's going to be where at that point. We don't know who's going to pick up some good wins or guy or teams that may fall back that you don't expect to fall back. Maybe they slide in a spot here or back there. So, like, I just think you have to keep that in mind. When we have these conversations, the reason we label them as the day edition, you know, whatever the date is, is because that is the conversation of the moment of where things stand. But we all know it's going to change by the time we get to Thursday, by the time we get to Selection Sunday, it's all going to change. So for now, I think Mississippi State certainly needs to beat Florida. What they have to do beyond that, I have no idea because I I really don't know what, you know, I don't know what that's going to look like because I don't know what the rest of the bubble is going to look like at that point on Friday if they're paired with an Alabama. Um, and again, if you lose to Alabama, that doesn't really hurt you if you're looking at it just from an overall resume standpoint. But if you're a bubble team, do you need that extra boost? Because if they beat Alabama, they're 100% in, right? So it's you're playing that game. And so that's where I'm at in Mississippi State. Vanderbilt, I told you last night, I just think that there have been some games around them that have not helped them. Certainly there have been, I think, one or two that maybe have, but I think it sort of all evens out to where I don't know that they're that much further away than they were, but I do think maybe they're a spot or two further away now than they were, um, you know, on Sunday, Saturday, whenever that that conversation was had. Um, so, yeah, maybe that has now gone from you win two and boy, we think you've got a really, really good shot to you win two and eh, it's probably going to take another. Like, I, I almost think that's where it is right now. But as I said, that could change by the time we get to tip off on Thursday or Friday, um, depending on how the games unfold for both Mississippi State and Vanderbilt. You're muted. You're muted. And you're still muted. Sorry. And you're back. (laughs) No, I'm not. (laughs) Delay. We got we got bunkers all over our neighborhood where a certain kind right, of company. We need to wrap this up. up <laughs> okay, N- NC State is another one that I think people have in that I boy I don't know. <laughs> NC State's big wins: home against Duke, home against Miami, and then home against North Carolina and Clemson for what that's worth. Did, well, did did beat Vandy on a neutral floor, but I mean. Miami and Duke are the only teams NC State's beaten that are in the tournament for sure. No losses in, in quad three and four. Some I'm guessing they're safe, but four and six on the road, although Auburn's four and eight. I don't know, man. We, we're getting into a land of about 15 teams where it's just what's the committee going to say? And, and a lot of this is going to sort themselves. A lot of this is going to sort out. Here's what you need to be watching. Okay. NC State has got a Wednesday game in the ACC tournament against a not to be or a yet to be determined opponent. Nevada has got a Thursday game in the Mountain West tournament against San Jose State. Lose that one. I think Nevada could slide down the bubble quickly. Wisconsin's got a game against Ohio State on Wednesday in the Big Ten tournament that it don't I don't think it can afford to lose. Penn State's got a game against Illinois on Thursday. I might be one of those where Penn State is, is sort of saved by the bracketing because you lose to Illinois, that's not a bad loss. You win it, it's a good win. Uh, I think Penn State's in a good spot. Rutgers, Michigan, that that could be a play for a bid game in the Big Ten tournament on Thursday. As you said, I think Mississippi State's got to beat Florida. Arizona State probably cannot afford a loss to Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament on Wednesday. Same with Oklahoma. State and its game with Oklahoma Wednesday. Uh, Utah State plays. We don't know who yet in the Mountain West tournament on Thursday. Vandy's got to be either Georgia or LSU on Friday to stay in the conversation. Uh, North Carolina, which I think has been overrated by the bracketologists, got an ACC tournament game against we don't know who yet on Wednesday. Oregon, Pac-12 tournament game on Thursday against we don't know who. And Clemson, an ACC tournament game against we don't know who on Thursday. So that is what you're going to want to scoreboard watch over the next couple of days. There you go. Hit subscribe, hit the like button and uh, lots more stuff on the way. We've 
yeah, we'll have picks for every game. We're probably, we've said we're going to do those individually. We're probably going to have to group those together because the problem is we don't know who's going to play Tennessee. We don't know who's going to play Vanderbilt. And then we don't know who's going to play Alabama and all the other top four seeds. So we'll probably just have those prediction videos, preview videos, whatever you want to call them, out the morning of those game days, which is, I know, unusual. We usually mm -hmm. put them out the day before, but you guys understand why we can't do that right now. So, um, yeah, so you'll have to, to get those uh, in quickly before the games get going uh, each tournament day. but. We will have those as usual and uh, a lot more stuff on the way. All right. Thanks for watching. Be safe. If you're joining us in Bridgestone Arena for the SEC tournament, Blake and I will be there on media passes. So we'd love to run into some of you guys who are loyal watchers. Thanks for watching our channel. We'll see you again soon with more coverage of SEC Hoops.